Hi, my name is Janet Hagopian, and I'm an archaeologist here at the museum, and I work with the prehistoric pottery. Um, many ask us, why, are, why do archaeologists find ceramics so important at a site? Well, for one thing, we use ceramics to date sites. We can say when it was occupied and for how long. We also know what tasks were performed at a site. Um, and we also can determine if the inhabitants of a site interacted with people in other regions. So from that, um, so groundbreaking work done at the museum, done by Dr. Colton and Dr. Hargrave, um, they created a typology for the ceramics found across northern Arizona. Um, and with that typology, they also worked with tree ring dates. The tree ring date, any kind of structural logs that were found with the pottery at a site, they were able to determine when that site was, when the pottery was being made. That just didn't come out right at all. But anyway, so using tree ring dates, they were able to establish when a pot was made at a site. So from that, we were able to go and use that data. Now I use that data to tell you when a site was occupied and for how long. So for example, this is an early pot. You can see the narrow lines and there's ticks on the triangles. So that moves on to this where we have bolder lines with triangles with dots rather than ticks. Then we move on to a pot that has just lines and triangles, no dots. And from there, we work on up to here, where you see we start to get smaller elements, but there's more of them. So you get more of a balance between the white and black. Then we move on up to here, where you see there's more black than white. And that's the progression that we see here in, this, in the Flagstaff area which I think is really cool because it can tell you a lot of information. So here in, in Arizona, in northern Arizona, we have Tucson whiteware. That ware is painted with um, organic paint. So if you, have, if you find a shirt on a site that has mineral paint, we know that that was made elsewhere. And that type usually was made over in east, eastern Arizona and into New Mexico. So from that information, we know that the people around here interacted with people over there to the east. So yes, these vessels are beautiful, but unfortunately, I work with sherds, and I'll show you some sherds over here. So here I have a sample of sherds in our collection with their type names and the dates that they were made. So from this information, so if I have this, find any of these on a site, I can assign them that date range. And if you notice, even in these sherds, even it's small, these small pieces of a vessel, here we have the narrow lines and the ticks. We have dots and no dots. And it keeps on going through the progression that I showed earlier with the tighter, more black than white, which is pretty fascinating and it works. It absolutely works. The other thing is vessel form. So we know this is a bowl shirt. We actually have the rim here. And since we don't even have the bottom, you can see that this is a pretty big bowl. And then here, we have a jar. And you can just see from the curvature that it's a pretty big jar. This was probably a very large, um, either it stored dry goods or water. But it would have been about, you know, uh, that big. So since most of my work is concerns sherds and the, bro the broken pieces of pottery we see at a site, um, it's really important, and you know, the thing is that they tell a complete story. These pieces of pottery tell a story about the site, and 
if one of these pieces is missing from a site, we don't get the complete story. So that's why we feel that ceramics are really important to archaeologists, and we also feel that it's important to leave the artifacts where they are on a site. Thank you.